Hey YouTube, Kevin Clear here with a knife video for you and today I want to talk about the Real Steel Flying Shark. Not that Real Steel Flying Shark and also not this Real Steel Flying Shark but here is the knife, the Real Steel Flying Shark. Now I've got to say that name does elicit some strange imagery. Uh, keep in mind though it is taking its name from the, the jet you saw just a second ago uh, that the Chinese military is developing and often when you get uh, expressions crossing cultural lines they don't always convey the same thing uh, to different people so that's really what's happening with the name there so I'm not crazy about the name but I get it okay uh, I want to say this as well about Real Steel before we carry on I think Real Steel is doing a really cool thing uh, at this moment and that is they're offering um, a, a legitimate good quality alternative to you know the the typical budget folders that we're getting from you know the typical American Spyderco, CRKT, uh, we could even add I suppose Kershaw, Steel Will, Ontario, a bunch of those guys have overseas produced budget folders and Real Steel is competing with them and a lot of times they're beating them at the end that beating them at their own game. Uh, they're doing some really, really nice stuff, really well built. Um, 14C28N is generally the steel choice and I've seen much, much, much better performance out of that steel than what you're getting on a lot of the competitors now. I know there's the Ontario Rat 1 in D2 and the Cutjack in D2 and that, that evens the playing field a little bit for sure. Uh, so, <clears throat> I've got to say that I've been really impressed with a lot of stuff from Real Steel. The the S571 Pro was amazing. The Megalodon is amazing. The H6 is really great. The G3 Puko is really cool. A little different and not for everyone, but very well done. The Griffin again. So lots of these knives are just exceptional. And this one, although maybe not up to par, up to the same par as some of those I just mentioned, is still very very good. Okay. Uh, this is an Ostap Hell design, and he's got a few designs with Real Steel. Uh, again, of some pretty nice stuff. So uh, I'm definitely appreciating his work, and I'll be interested to see uh, what he does kind of moving forward. It'll be I, I'd like to see one of their high-end offerings designed by him. So something on the level of the the Real Steel Megalodon or the uh, the S571 Pro, because those knives are spectacular with the the needle bearings. Okay, so. Size and weight on this guy. Uh, now we'll get back to our main focus. Nine and one eighth inches overall. Four and just under. So this is like just a hair over four inches on the blade. And the handle is, if you measure this, it comes out to about five and one eighth. And it's literally just under that one eighth. Weight on this is a pretty hefty 6.6 .6 or 6.7 ounces, depending on whether you go with the carbon fiber or the G10. Now the G10 one, guys, I have over here in pieces so I can show you some of the construction um, elements of this knife. So I'm not going to bring it in for a minute, but I'll, you'll, you'll get to see it in a second here. Okay, so now that we've got the size and weight out of the way, it does carry fairly comfortably. I mean, it's, it's smooth enough that it goes in and out of pocket pretty well. 6.6 .6 ounces is a little heavy, but considering the size of this knife, honestly, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, especially, you know, they have taken some pretty good measures to cut down on the weight. And here's a good time to bring in. So here's one half of the frame opened up and you can see how much milling has been done. And here is the other half. I got to try to kind of hold it together because I've made it so I can take this apart easily for you. Uh, so they have done quite a bit of milling. <clears throat> Uh, and, and I will say I really appreciate that. And it does take a knife that, you know, really this design would be essentially, you know, not worth making if if you just left it as is with full stain, stainless steel slabs here. It'd be so heavy, you know, you'd get to seven and a half, eight ounces, and it would just be ridiculous. But the, the milling they've done does make it carryable. The one complaint I have about carrying this knife is the pocket clip here there's it's it works fine and it carries okay but there's not a whole lot of space in here so if you're wearing thicker pants it can get a little difficult to get this in and out of pocket uh, in a thinner pair of dress pants or something like that or just even a pair of jeans it's not that bad uh, so that's the size and weight and carry very comfortable to carry for its size and for its construction okay so is it the most comfortable easiest to carry knife ever well no but considering what you're what you're getting here with in terms of size and a four inch blade and a stainless steel frame lock, it's not that bad at all. 
<clears throat> Excuse me guys, I got a bit of a cold here. Uh, so let's go ahead now and talk about the blade. The blade is a drop point blade in 14C28N, stone wash finish on that guy. Um, in terms of use, it's actually quite good. It's nice and thin behind the edge. 14C28N is a good performing steel. Uh, in my experience. I've had, you know, again, I, I say this over and over again, but I have had excellent luck with it. And if you want more about this, go over and check out Cedric Ada Outdoors. He did a steel roundup video, which is excellent. And I, I linked it in a recent video, so some of you are probably aware of it already, but he kind of lists the performance of a bunch of steels and puts them together. And 14C28N landed with VG10 and, and 154CM in terms of uh, edge retention. So really, really a good steel. Uh, now, let's talk about a couple of other details here. One thing that I want to mention is I, you know, I see this angle and as soon as I see this angle on a blade, I get nervous. Okay. Cause I'm usually, that means they messed up the plunge grind, but in this case, they've actually got it really well. The, the grind ends and they are able to start right at the proper thickness here. So you don't get this weird, like swelling back here at the heel of the blade. Sorry about the focus there guys, but back here at the heel of the blade, you'll often get issues not so with this knife. There is one negative point that I wanna make here and that is about this milling. So see if I can show you, there you go. See this ridge right here? I've got my fingernail hooked onto it right now. This is like a milled out portion of the blade and I'm sure it saves weight and it also does allow you some purchase here to get the knife uh, to open. Let's see if I can do it on camera for you. I honestly, whoops. I will say this, I can't always get the knife to open this way. And yeah, today is gonna be one of those days, but you kind of can get enough purchase there. Generally, I'm gonna call this, you know, primarily a flipper only, but you can do that because of that milled out portion of the blade, but it is an abrupt 90 degree edge right there. And so there is the potential for kind of gunk and crap and stuff to get in here. I, I have used the knife quite a bit and I haven't found that. And I purposely sort of went and cut, you know, some apples and cheese and different things like that to see if this would become a problem. And under normal use, it didn't. Now, maybe if you cut a peanut butter sandwich, I don't know. I didn't test every single conceivable thing, but I did a bunch of cutting and a bunch of food prep specifically to see if food would get in there and I didn't really have a problem with it. Uh, but I, I guess theoretically it could be one. So that's the blade, a uh, very good blade. I'm really happy with the performance on it. Of course, I love the size of it. The edge geometry is good. So no complaints whatsoever. And even the steel is quite good. Uh, 14C28N is probably my favorite budget steel. And I, I feel like I beat that drum an awful lot. So you probably are well aware of that by now. Let's talk now then about lockup and deployment. It is a stainless steel frame lock um, <clears throat> on bearings. And it does lock up and deploy pretty well. Um, I will say the way the lock bar, I mean the way the flipper tab is sort of designed, the geometry pretty well in, is only designed for a light switch. If you try to, I don't know, you can't even really push button it at all. You pretty much have to light switch it, but it works really well. The detent is set to be not too stiff, but just stiff enough that it flies out consistently. And so, you know, I'm definitely happy with that. Uh, this again is a knife, and I've said this a few other times. If, I, if you're the kind of guy like I am that will flip a knife over and over again while watching TV or, or reading or whatever, uh, this knife is not gonna be a problem for you. It's very, very comfortable, both in the, the way the lock bar is accessed and actuated, as well as the flipper itself. So no issues whatsoever there. It is on bearings, and I'll bring this blade over here so you can see those bearings. Uh, and you can also see, since we're talking about lockup and deployment, you can see the uh, stop pin right there. And if I pull the frame over here, there's the track that the stop pin rides in. So normally this would be like that, and that stop pin would be riding right in that little track that you can see cut into the frame. Uh, so it's, it's turning out that I need two knives for every review so that I can take one apart and show you all this. This is working out really well. Uh, obviously that's not gonna be the case most of the time, but since we have that opportunity, let's take advantage of it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's what's happening with the, uh, the internals there. You can see the, the caged bearings and you can see the internal stop pin on there. Uh, and all of that is functioning really, really well. The lockup is nice and solid. Uh, I really have no big issue with um, with anything pertaining to lockup and deployment. The detent could maybe be a little bit stiffer, but I, you know, honestly, it works consistently and that's basically what I expect.
okay? Um, the action on this guy is good, but it's not quite as good as some of the other real steels that I've had. I think I've commented before, but the, the knives like the Griffin, the, the G3 Puko, uh, this knife for sure, the Megalodon, uh, the action on these that have the, uh, the needle bearings is unbelievable. It, it's honestly, you know, it feels better than knives that cost five times more. It's just really, really well done. Now, I don't know what the price point is gonna be on this guy, by the way. Um, it, you know, if it lands around, you know, 50, 60 bucks, I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, if it goes higher than that, then maybe that's a little overpriced, but I will say this. If this had the needle bearings, I think they could command a higher price for it because the action would just be superb. And um, and I honestly would really have liked to see the, seen the needle bearings on this knife, uh, which, uh, you know, if they didn't do it and that's fine, it still works. It's just not quite as smooth as some of the real steels that, and I will say I picked up a few of those real steels, the ones I just named. And when you, when you actuate it, you're just amazed that a knife for that price point could feel that smooth and that good. Uh, now let's move on to the handle. It is a stainless steel handle with some kind of inlay. Now this one of course is the carbon fiber inlay. On the other one we have the G10 inlay. Uh, by the way G10 clip as well which we've already commented on uh, single position. But let me talk about the way they've done this inlay for a second and I'll finally grab the other side of the handle here. So let's see. So there's the the G10 version you know matches up with this guy and the way they've actually done this is this inset or inlay is hold on this has come out like a hundred times no problem now okay there you go so that's how they've milled it out so they, they they've milled out an inlay but then here they've actually gone all the way through to save on some weight and they've actually done a pretty good job of that overall uh, there's hold on I'm trying to get the bearing back in place okay so that's how they've done that inset. So behind here, you can see from the other one that I just showed you that it's actually just hollow all the way through, which is fine. And I think in terms of construction, it's not an issue at all. But I will say one thing, because of the way they made that hollow, when the knife deploys, you probably won't be able to hear this on camera, okay? But it does give it sort of a weird sound when it when it fully actuates I, and I don't know how to describe it other than it's just a weird sound okay not not an issue uh, it's just a slight change created by the fact that they've they've milled that totally through so this is actually sort of skeletonized um, <clears throat> Obviously, I guess uh, we should point out too, with, when it comes to construction, it's pretty neat. They've done one standoff here and one up here, and they've kind of minimized the number of screws needed. So this screw in the top of the clip goes through into this standoff, which also goes, and then this screw from here goes in. By the way, that standoff does have a little mount on it, so it does sort of secure the handle in the proper location. Um, by the way, while we're talking about this clip, it is milled G10, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, it hasn't been an issue to me yet, and I can't really see it being an issue, but I, I almost would have been happier with just a plain old spring clip, okay? Uh, again, it's not a deal breaker, it's not, a, it's not problematic, uh, just a matter of my own personal preferences. Uh, so let's see, I think that pretty much covers, oh wait, <laughs> uh, we've covered the construction, but we haven't actually talked about the ergonomics, which generally are quite good. The only issue I have with ergos is they've, they've rounded the spine in this portion up here, and I kind of wish they'd left it alone, because I feel like this squared off would have given me a little bit better, you know, a little more real estate for my thumb, as well as left the jimping a little rougher. Right now there's jimping there, but it doesn't do a whole lot. Now. Otherwise, it's very comfortable, you know, in, in reverse grip, in standard grip, you know, I have no issue at all with the, the ergonomics on this knife. And also, the stonewash finish uh, gives this enough texture that it's not an issue. You know, I've never had that feeling that you sometimes get with stainless steel folders that, man, if I'm sweaty or wet or anything like that, I'm going to drop this knife. I don't get that with this knife whatsoever. So again, very, very much appreciated. Uh, let's see, let's bring into some comparisons now. We've talked about this knife quite a bit. Uh, I did bring this knife in because it's an example of just what real steel is able to do. This knife, I've got to say, is ex just exceptional, okay? It's really, really good. Uh, if you don't have one and you're into high-end knives, uh, I think you should definitely check one out. This is absolutely impressive. 
Uh, I really, really look forward to what Real Steel is going to do. They could, honestly, they could sell like a million of these frame locks in various different designs. And I hope that they come up with a bunch of different ones because they are so, so well done that, you know, they, they just need to, you know, as a service to the knife community, they should make a bunch of these in all kinds of different designs so that whatever one you like, you can get this level of quality in a design you like. Uh, that's my rant over, guys, get, get back to the main focus. Uh, this is of course a large stainless steel frame lock. Often I've said like, that's just not my thing, but this one is pretty good. So let's bring in a couple others that I feel like are pretty good. This is from Reich Knives. Now it's a little smaller, but again, there's more steel here. It weighs less. Uh, again, a very good, you know, of the, of the stainless steel frame locks that exist, there are not that many great ones. And these two are both pretty darn good. And I would certainly not try to dissuade anyone from buying them, even though I have done that in the past. Various people have asked me about different knives and I usually say stay away from stainless steel frame locks, but that one's not bad. I've got another one here that's not bad as well. Um, this is the CRKT Carnaflux, I think. I may be saying that wrong. I may be adding an extra letter that doesn't belong, but something like that. And again, this is a large knife, very similar in size. In fact, I think I'll do a full comparison between these two. Um, a little more budget friendly. The steel is a fair downgrade. Um, the only thing I dislike about this knife is the inlay here. I honestly wish CRKT had just done plain stainless steel um, or just gone with a different inlay that didn't have these stupid crocodile spikes on the back of it. That's really the, the big detractor for me for this knife. Otherwise though, I really, really like this. Uh, and it is a little more budget friendly. The action is good, but it, it doesn't feel as good as this one, okay? Uh, what else have we got? Let's turn get away from that for a second. Uh, here's another great budget folder, uh, the Steel Wheel Cut Jack. And since we're talking about real steel so much, here is the Steel Wheel uh, E802 Horus. Pull that one in as well. Okay, and again, this one, the action is actually a little nicer on this guy than on the, uh, than on the Flying Shark, uh, but Flying Shark, again, is quite good. So, those are some comparisons for you. Uh, <clears throat> I tried to get knives that would be sort of similar or at least have some connection there. And uh, so hopefully that's of interest to you. Finally, let's give my overall take on this knife. I think uh, the design is cool. They've done some different things. I, you know, I'm not crazy about the G10 clip, but it certainly makes the knife stand out. Uh, I like the overall design, large decorative pivot inlay here. Um, what would be interesting guys is with the G10 inlay, hold on, I'm gonna try to flip this over without having it all fall to pieces on me. It would be cool to see a bunch of different color options like blue, green, purple, yellow, I don't know, anything you could think of. Um, because, you know, this knife seems like a design that's really well set up for that where you could just do, go all over the place, you know, put this blade in this handle, right? This blade in this handle and this blade in that handle. Uh, <clears throat> it'd be interesting to see a bunch of different uh, color variations. But yeah, great knife overall. Yes, it's big, it's a little heavy. Not heavy really for its size though, considering there are much more expensive knives with better materials that you know, are, are similar in size and weight that are, you know, that are not stainless steel frame locks. So can't really complain too much about that weight, even though that's really my biggest detractor from it is it's a bit big and it's a bit heavy. Otherwise, great knife, absolute win. Totally think this is a, a recommended knife. Um, of course, there will be some people who look at this design and don't like the look of it. And if you don't like the look of a knife, then don't buy it by all means. But if you're kind of looking at this and on the fence, I think you, you won't be disappointed by picking one up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about the extra length this time. We will talk to you soon.